Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and ITY TV interview. I'm joined today by Dave Stevens, the Managing Director and Founder of Brennan. Welcome to the program. Good to be with you, Alex. Thank you for taking the time. Now, Dave, I always like to start at the beginning, and for me, that's to ask what is Brennan's mission, products, and services looking like as we head into 2023? So for 2023, for us, it's very much about Brennan Digital. Um, it's a brand that we launched uh, a couple of months ago, which uh, is the combination of our recent acquisitions around Clade, MOQ, and the existing Brennan Digital capabilities. So we'll be delivering on the dynamics practice. Um, we'll be you know, doing custom app dev, um, big data and AI activities, and a strategic advisory as well. So it'll be a good 2023. 20, Sure. And what problems is both Brennan and Brennan Digital solving? You just explained a, a number of the things that you can do, but what is the, what are the customer pain points and problems that uh, you're able to uh, eliminate? Yeah, it's so on the digital side of things. It's very much a combination of, uh, you know, using things like Dynamics. Um, we've got our own custom dev around membership management to build whole of business systems. And a good example is um, we have a great customer who is Australia's biggest ice manufacturer. And we've been able to pull together a platform that allows them to replace all of their internal financial systems, but also uh, automate all of their manufacturing side of the business and all of the delivery and you know, sign on glass outcomes. So combining that with the traditional you know, Brennan MSP capabilities, we're able to deliver an outcome that essentially does everything for that customer. So, you know, from the ice manufacturing, we're able to tell them how much ice to manufacture based on the temperature of the day, um, how much ice is in the system in terms of out in the, in the service stations, and then, you know, automate the process of, you know, signing on glass when ice is delivered, invoicing, etc. So a really great outcome. Sure. Well, I mean, it just goes to show the power of all the analytics and data and all the data points. I mean, even down to the temperature, <laughs> that enables such a granular response to customer needs. 27 degrees is the optimal ice consumption temperature, by the way. There you go. <laughs> so how big is Brennan today? I mean, you started 25 years ago uh, and uh, you've got you know, offices in different parts of the world. Tell us about uh, your size and scope. Yeah, so we were just under 11 or just over 1,100 people uh, as we close out 22. Um, we've got offices in India, Sri Lanka, the Philippines, inside Australia, you know, right across the, the country, um, far north Queensland, Brisbane, Newcastle, Sydney, um, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, you name it. Uh, we, we've got people up in Darwin. Uh, we need to get some people in Tassie. Um, and we've also got people over in uh, New Zealand as well. So you know, pretty much Australian-wide and also up into region now too. So you're, you're now uh, serving a global market or are you mainly focused uh, on Australia? I look, mainly delivering to Australian companies in Australia. Uh, but many of our customers have branches in Canada and the UK, up into Europe, the US, of course. So we deliver services in that location. But we also deliver... Uh, service in Australia and New Zealand for international customers too. So starting to spread our wings a bit from the international kind of side of things. Sure. Well, the possibilities are endless with the, mm. with the global market. So it'd be interesting to watch Brennan's progress there. Which industries does Brennan work with? I mean, presumably uh, almost anybody. Yeah, so to our customer base, we've got about 1,500 customers across the country. So they very much reflect the enterprise landscape. So the biggest uh, for us is financial services, uh, but also very large in retail, manufacturing, not-for-profit, um, and uh, gov. So especially big in state government, in Queensland, uh, Vic, and uh, emerging in New South Wales as well. And I understand that uh, at least one of your customers that you started with 25 years ago was, is still with you today. Yeah, absolutely. So um New South Wales Farmers was one of our, well, our very first customer. Um, I was uh, delivering a training course, actually, and one of the ladies that was on the course, I was there to learn how to make two video cards work in a high-end graphics machine so that she could um, have two screens and, you know, kind of increase her productivity. It was an operating system course. So when I found out what she was there for, 
I kind of ducked out after the course and you know adjusted all the IRQs on the you know on the block and uh, got the two cards working and unfortunately she didn't bother turning up for the course on day two because her need had kind of been met but they went on to become a great customer and uh, are still a customer today which is awesome. Yeah, wonderful success story. And so, uh, who are the partners, you know, in terms of hardware, software, cloud, and services that you most prefer working with? We love them all. Uh, the, the biggest partners for us are very much Microsoft, HP, uh, Lenovo, you know, guys like Commvault. Um, you know, we have a, a very big um, Azure presence, of course. Um, so, yeah, they, you know, they're, they're the kind of ones that I deal with most anyway. Sure. And uh, are there any other customer success stories of note that you'd like to share? Well, we've got tons of them. It's some really interesting ones, actually. One that happened recently that really kind of caught my imagination was we had a, a, a um, cake manufacturing company up in Queensland that had a far north Queensland uh, office or facility, and they needed a new router. They'd had a, like an a, a electrical strike. Or, um, anyway... Uh, the couriers were quoting a couple of days to get a router up there. Uh, we also knew that uh, one of our other Brisbane customers had a truck route that passed through the same town. So we uh, delivered the router to the truck driver at the front of his semi, who was kind enough to divert off the highway when he got to town and drove it straight to the uh, to the manufacturing site for the cakes. Uh, delivered it. Uh, we talked the um, you know the locals through how to turn that router on, pre-configured, of course. Anyway, as, as a vote of thanks, uh, the cake manufacturer then sent a custom-made cake to both the transport company and to our Brisbane office as well. So we just, I just love that story about the kind of symbiotic nature, everyone helping everyone else, which is very much the culture around here. Yeah, well, that's a great customer service story as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Are there any other ones that you want to highlight? Oh, look, you know, I think we do, do some really good jobs. Um, or have done some really good work with a, a particular customer, Tourism NT. So they were, as part of their COVID um, economic response, they had a, you know, a voucher redemption program. And the voucher redemptions were taking 16 minutes to, to um, you know, to redeem for the residents. We were able to write a power app really quickly that brought that processing time down from 16 minutes to 12 seconds. So that was really well received both by the government and by all of the, you know, the citizens as well. So that was awesome. Wonderful. Now, you've also made a number of acquisitions over the years. So can you please tell us about the most recent acquisition and how that has helped transform Brennan uh, yet again? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the most recent was, of course, MOQ. Um, that one got quite a bit of press due to the fact that they're a public company and there's a bit of a bidding war on for that one. Um, but then just prior to that, a uh, few months prior, was a company called Clade as well. So Clade and MOQ together have really brought to us a you know, very strong position in terms of uh, dynamics, custom app dev, um, data and AI, strategic advisory. And that's really been the powerhouse behind the Brennan Digital approach as well. So that's going to be a very you know, big focus for us in 2023. We will continue to supplement that investment with, you know, specific platform-based investments as well. But um, so Clade has been a very, you know, very good acquisition, quite advanced in terms of its uh, integration. Uh, MOQ has been with us now for six weeks, um, so we enjoy the Christmas parties. Um, they're bigger than ever, of course, and uh, are working our way quickly through that integration as well. So, uh, what's the story of? Brennan's founding, and where does the name Brennan come from? You're Dave Stevens, not Dave Brennan. Mm, and that's probably the, the key to it, actually, is when I first started, I was on the tools, had, uh, I was out there, you know, kind of pounding the streets with a uh, screwdriver in my hand, and I wanted a name that sounded like there was a Mr. Brennan back in the office, and it worked, because for years afterwards, um, you know, people would call and ask for Dave Brennan or Mr. Brennan or, you know, whatever the case might be, so... Yeah, that, that's the actual story. I, I could probably think of a better one, but that's the <laughs> that's a very cool one. Yeah, but what about the uh, what was the catalyst that could, you know caused you to decide I'm going to start a uh, an IT services company? 
Yeah, so I, and I relate that story about the New South Wales farmers person earlier. That used to happen constantly. Uh, I'd be delivering a, a operating system or a high-end networking course for Cisco or Bay or a Novell or a Microsoft course, and about half the participants were there to learn how to create users, you know, assign permissions, share a printer, share a modem, that sort of thing. Um, and they were accounts people or the receptionist, you know, people in finance, etc. And it became very obvious to me slowly but surely that, you know, there was a whole market out there in the mid-market, you know, smaller companies that were not getting serviced by, you know, the reseller community as it was. So we started, uh, or started Brennan, specifically not selling hardware, just delivering services. And, you know, it took off really quickly. Uh, we had a kind of prepaid, you know, SLA attached kind of product out in market and it was just selling like hotcakes. And within our first couple of years, we were at 50 people and, you know, it was clear that there was a, we we had just come onto the market at the time, you know, picked a good demand. So yeah, it's a great journey. Enjoyed it. And so how do you see Brennan evolving over the next couple of years? Yeah, so we've always been really driven by how we can add value you know, the best way to add value to our customers. And, you know, we're constantly asking that question is, you know, how can we change what we do or add to what we do to deliver more value? And for us, over the coming couple of years, that really is going to be on the digital side of the world. So we will expand into other platforms, potentially ServiceNow or Salesforce, um, and look for new and innovative ways that we can really drive performance for our customers. And when we do that, you know, we get a very strong uptake from the customer base. You know, there are 1,500 of them. So if we can get that right, then, you know, we get volume quickly. And we get longevity out of that as well because we're continuously kind of renewing around what's best for our customer base. And if you look into the crystal ball a little bit further, I mean, in 2007, we had the birth of the smartphone, the iPhone. It's, you know, 15 years later and they're everywhere or all of our heads are buried in them. But uh, over the next 10 or 15 years, we expect the metaverse should be Mm. as commonplace as smartphones, websites, apps and tablets are today. So how do you think the industry might look like when uh, we're all walking around with, you know, augmented reality, extended reality glasses and accessing Mm. everything that we do that way? I mean, it'd be, it's going to be amazing, you know, regardless of how it develops, it, if, you know, with the rate of change increasing and all that sort of thing. Look, I, I would be a, a very wealthy man, I think, if I could predict the future of tech that way. But, you know, what, w- what we'll do is that we'll watch that, you know, really interesting tech come into market. And we will continue to ask that question around how can our customers use this to benefit themselves? So we will adopt early ourselves, we'll test it, find, you know, find business use cases, you know, business benefit cases and continuously position that with our customers. And you know, when something really does add value, we will champion it and really push it hard. So you know, I'm looking forward to whatever that journey is. And, you know, I like the tech and, you know, seeing the business benefits and I like even more when we show it to our customers and they enjoy it too. Yeah, absolutely. Now, before I ask you some closing questions about yourself and your final messages to everybody watching, is there anything else about Brennan that we haven't discussed that we should know? I I think that, you know, we're pretty chuffed. We've become the number one Australian systems integrator through the year. You know, the the acquisitions certainly helped on that journey, but we've grown significantly organically as well. And, I, you know, I think that's something to be really proud of. There's some great, you know, companies in our space uh, and to be the largest of them, uh, you know, something that I'd like to mention. Sure. Very, very cool. Now, uh, one question I always like to ask is, can you please share a memory of your first computer? Ah, yeah, look, my, my first computer I think that I used was an old Apple IIe. Um, my first one that I bought was a, um, a pretty cracking uh, 286 at the time. I remember I had about four gig, or four meg of memory, I should say. I was going to say just four gig. Um, and I remember, I, yeah, it had the turbo button, which I'm not sure did anything, but um, uh, I remember having the best config.sys 
out there as well. Load high this, load high that. Great. I was a, I was a master at uh, optimizing people's config.sys and autoexec.bat. And obviously, yeah. you sounds like you were too. Oh, mate, there, there was a living to be made out of that. I've yeah. still got a bit of tech I wanted to show you, actually, which was Please. my first ever PDA. So ah, that's... yeah, yeah. There we go. Very cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pilot. Yeah. Um, that's the US robotics. Uh, actually, that's the three conversion. The three conversion. Yeah, yeah. So, I just um, I just put one of those old trio uh, handhelds in, or palm, uh, like a later one, much later one, into mm -hmm. one of those recycle bins at Officeworks because it's just you know, there's, there's only so much old tech you can have. But that's a three com one, so that's that's worth something. Yeah, I reckon that's. The, mate, I keep that with me actually in my office. I wonder what happened to palm script as well. I was super good at that. And in this particular thing, I had a like a solid gold little pen as well, which I think was pretty fancy in the day. But I love I love this thing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that if you go to the app store on your iPhone, and I'm sure it's the same on Android, you can find a keyboard that still lets you do the old graffiti text entry oh, really? if you want to. Yeah. Well, I, there was one that you could do handwriting, and that was um, you know sometime before you could do handwriting on iPads. So I'm sure it's out there. Whether it's still updated or not, I don't know. But I'd be surprised if if there wasn't one out there because people love nostalgia. <laughs> I always learn so much from you, Alex, when I change. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. Thank you for uh, for watching. Now, my second last question is always to ask if you could please share some of the best advice you've received in life to help you get where you are today. Uh, I think one of the most, you know, one of the most interesting things I ever learned, um, and I, I probably had been given the advice but didn't particularly follow it, was about cash flow. And I remember, you know, about five or seven years into our journey, um, we were profitable and, you know, every month's accounts would come out and I would, you know, you'd look at it and you'd think it was amazing. And then I remember my finance person of the day who is still with us now, um, Carolyn, amazing, um, but coming to me saying we don't have enough money in the bank to pay payroll, which is all good. I kind of went to my own bank account, transferred some, and um, but the you know the question was very much asked. Well, where's all the money if we're profitable? And we we both scratched around, Carolyn more than I, and found that it's essentially sitting in our debtors, so people that hadn't paid us. So in order to kind of squeeze through over the coming you know weeks and months as we you know went harder and collected those debtors. We had to send all the rented pot plants back just to save those few dollars a month, basically. So we, we took them all out of the office on a weekend, put them in the stairwell, painted the walls behind where they were previously so people wouldn't notice. Um, but, yeah, a very hard lesson learned on cash flow. So I wish I had have listened to that advice. Sure, I think that applies to everybody. Cash flow is a, is a, a super important thing. I mean, I've heard it said that a lot of people are one crisis away from homelessness. So, mm. I mean, that's just cash flow in their own personal lives. And, uh, yeah, yeah. That's so, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And that's also why it's useful to have side hustles uh, so that you can, you've got multiple sources of income, but easier said than done, unfortunately. <laughs> so what is your final message to ITY viewers and readers and to your current and future customers and partners? Oh, look, I've got, I think, the, a message that I would love to leave um, our customers and our future future customers, future partners, is buy Australian, yeah? I mean, the, the biggest of the, you know, the systems integrators in Australia are, you know, American, French, Indian, um, Japanese, and it doesn't have to be the case. You know, the, the quality of work that... Well, Brennan and our, you know, and our competitors or our, you know, frenemies out of the marketplace do is equally as good. And I think, you know, government does a good job of prioritising, you know, the Australian kind of marketplace, which is great. But I would encourage everyone to do the same. Wonderful. Well, Steve, well, Dave Stevens, the managing director and founder of Brennan. Thank you very much for your time. I wish you the best of success in getting more and more companies to buy Australian. And I do hope we can talk again in the future. Yeah, we'd love that. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.